over now to the nuts and bolts of a more technical interview. And Catherine mentioned it this morning. You know, I've heard a lot of interviews these days are based on competency. So the interviewer is going to look for examples or stories and evidence of how you've behaved in the past. And they could ask questions like, can you tell me a time when you were a good team player? So I'm going to ask you, Lynn, what tips or advice could you give our audience here today around these competency-based interviews? Well, first of all, in terms of preparing for competency-based interviews, which both in the public and private sector are very, very common, um, you can, of course, go off and have a career coach or someone guide you on it, but there's also lots of information on the internet um, available. If you Google competency-based interviews, they'll give you sample questions. Um, and from my analysis of, I've got competency-based questions that are set up for one company in one industry, and I've compared them to other, comp other industries uh, going right across from the private sector to the public sector, the questions are very much the same. They may be asked in a different way, but they're very much the same. So if you take one set of questions and write up your answers, and th there is no easy way of doing this. It's all about practice. It's about getting the questions, thinking of quality answers as well. It's, it's not about quantity in any of this. It's about strong answers. Um, and there's an approach as well called STAR. If you Google that, it'll give you the steps on how to then answer the question. I helped a, a neighbor one evening for two hours at the kitchen table there recently to prepare for a competency-based interview, and I brought her, she, this was her second time to go for an interview within this organization, and I brought her along a load of questions, and I says, and she would say to me, but they're not the questions I was asked last time. But when we sat down and actually looked at them, they were the same questions. Um, so we devised a few answers. Now she went for the job. She didn't get get it. There's there's only so many positions. There were a lot of applicants. Um, but the preparation is absolutely key and practice as well. Just because you get knocked down first time, that doesn't mean you don't go. You keep going. I have a friend um, who is now a deputy principal, and this is no exaggeration. But he did a circuit of Ireland. I would say he had 40 interviews before he got that job that he wanted. And it was just practice, practice, practice. OK, so preparation, practice, and persistence, it seems, as well. Patrick? Yeah, I think the premise for competency-based interviews is that, that past behavior is the best predictor of future performance, really. And that's why there's such a focus on how it was that you managed situations in the past. Because they're going to give the interview board you know, clear indicators about how you might manage similar situations in their employment in the future. Just very quickly, I'd say that the, the STAR thing works very well. Um, I would also add a, an E to that, which is an evaluation piece. The, the STAR is a summary, the, key, the T is tasks, uh, the A is actions, so what was it that you actually did in step form to, to sort of achieve that, or is the results, and then E is sometimes is an evaluation. So what did you learn from that? What would you have done differently the next time, for example? Okay, fantastic. And, and just to follow up on, on STAR with Patrick C, you know, if you do an interview um, for, for, one of the, for a specific job and you don't get it, disappointment will be there. That's natural. We all are. But it, don't consider it a failure. What I would suggest you do is when you settle down and relax again, go to the chair, we'll say if it's in our case, of the interview board and ask to see the, your marks. And, and ask, where can I go? Um, there's another one coming up next week or next month, I know. What, you know, to see your marks and see where you went down. And then say, I, I noticed under that criteria, I didn't get a high, very high score. What could I do better? If somebody came in to me after, and they have given me a call on the phone or called in and said, you know, and what, what could I do or what should I do? Sometimes it's just really that the standard is so high. Mm. It's nothing that you've done wrong. It's just there's too many and the standard was very high. But there, there is nothing wrong. People kind of sometimes are feeling nervous. Oh, I couldn't go back and ask. Yes, you can. You can go back very nicely to anybody and say, is there a possibility I could see the score? Is there a possibility I could have a chat? Because I would like to improve if a position comes up again, either with you or with somebody else. And it's always good to follow on. 
and follow up with that. Great. Okay. So that's wonderful advice, looking for feedback. And I've heard once said that feedback is the breakfast of champions. I'm going to f ask now um, Martin McElhenney. Um, let's say somebody here today is listening and they have the good attitude and the willingness to, to do a job. They have the qualifications, but maybe they lack a little bit of experience. What recommendations would you give them? Well, at interview level, especially, um, I would say, you know, depending on the job, bring bring what you're passionate about about the job with you into the interview. Like you mightn't have, you mightn't have speaking of my own industry for an example, like you mightn't have a lot of experience, but if you can come on there and talk passionately and and, and, and enthusiastically about say fashion, like that that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to what I said earlier, but you know, but having the right attitude. And p people, people, people pick up on that. People see that. You're halfway there if you do that. Okay, you know. so you would encourage people to bring a bit of passion into it. Absolutely. The okay, great. Now, some people might feel shy about selling themselves or doing the pitch or going for interviews. And Patrick, I would won wonder, would you have any tips on how they might overcome that shyness? Well, I think it comes back to preparation as well. And, uh, you know, there's a number of key questions that are always going to come up in the interview in some form or another. And one of those is about, well, what, why did you apply for this job? Or what interests you about this position? Or why are you the best person for the job? Or as Anne said, well, we've interviewed 20 people today. Why should we pick you? Those are all variations of the same question. So you should be thinking about that in advance. And again, going back to my tip from earlier, thinking about what it is that you can actually add value, where you can add value to the company. So how can you match your skills, your knowledge, your expertise to what it is that the company actually want? And you know, in the very structured interviews as we would have in the public sector, some of that goes back to the job spec, to the, the person specification. And having a look at, look at that, have a look at the key areas, highlight the key pieces and see how you can match them. And, and rehearse that and prepare it a little bit in advance. Uh, I would say to people not to, not to learn off sort of six or seven lines that they're going to, to give to the, the panel when they're asked that question. Because if you are a little bit nervous at the start and you freeze or you forget the very first couple of words, you're lost and your mind's gone blank. What I'd suggest to people is to have a few bullet points um, to try and structure your answer. So in a very, again, professional arena as I would operate in for interviews lots of times, it's about maybe looking at how you can, you can structure the answer better. So it might be, what sort of personal skills or qualities do I have that match your need? What sort of professional qualifications or educational qualifications do I have that match your need? And then sometimes a little bit of personal awareness. So what is it that other people would say about you, for example? If they were asked, what was your strength, what would that be? Okay, thank you very much. And this really dovetails in with what Catherine said here this morning, not to learn things off. Have your points, have your bullet points, but don't over rehearse because the mind can go blank. I, it reminds me too, I was sitting down with you, Lynn and Bukrana, and you mentioned something too that I never thought of before when it came to interviews about perfume. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring this, I thought this was interesting. Yeah. Be interested. You'd be interested too. <laughs> I just find it quite daunting and quite difficult to concentrate um, when someone comes into an interview with with perfume on. Um, so, but that's personal to me. Yeah. I just find it very difficult. Sometimes it can just take over my whole thought process, and uh, it irritates your si my sinuses and all the rest. So, if you're coming to interview with me, please don't wear a perfume. <laughs> <laughs> and Lynn recruits across the county. So on a more serious note, looking for a job is a job. And sometimes we might not get it due to maybe high competition or, you know, um, and we might feel disappointed. So I'm wondering what advice would our pan panel give our audience here today that might help them stay positive in their job search? I'll start because I have the mic. Um, my <coughs> advice is to get on the first run of the ladder. Um, it goes back to something that Patrick mentioned there earlier about his talent bank. Um, a number of companies that I work with, their, their focus at the moment is developing the talent, as in the people that they have within the organization because 
they're a, a surer bet than taking someone from external. The people that are internal, they fit the culture, they understand the organisations, its goals, where it's going, it's how it works, all of that. And um, an awful lot of companies are developing their people from within. So if they believe that they need a supervisor in an area in six to 12 months, um, all this planning is done way in advance. They will sit down and um, identify right who at line level has the attitude, the experience, the qualifications if required to move into that role. So they identify those people and then they develop and train them and cross train them between different departments so that when that vacancy arrives that they can promote internally, they have their own talent bank. So it's not about getting into your the, the job that you view as perfect and your ideal job. It's about getting on the first run of the ladder and then making it work for you when you're in there. Fantastic. So getting on the first rung is the most important thing and work it from there. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah, just briefly, I'd say it's about learning as well. So as Anne said earlier, you know, obviously if you invest a lot of time and effort and energy into preparing for an interview, you apply because you want that particular job. And if you're not successful, you're going to be disappointed. But it's about learning from that. So how can you prepare better the next time? It's about thinking, you know, particularly I would say to people immediately after the interview, once you get back out to the car or onto the bus or train or whatever, is think about the interview itself and think about what went well that you can build on the next time. And also think about what could be improved, what could you do better, what would you like to change, what would you say or do differently the next time out. So that's a constant learning process. So that even though you might be disappointed and might be getting you know, a negative sort of responses initially, that eventually you'll get to the point by imp continually improving where you will be successful. Okay, thank you, Patrick. And I recognize that um, our audience here today are skilled learners. I mean, you've put a lot of work into your courses. We have a wide range of courses here from admin to hairdressing to IT and, and so on. And now you want to put that qualifications to good use. But we are going to be continually learning. And even the job search uh, um, process is a learning process. Um, I would like, we're coming towards the end here, and we're going to have 10 minutes for questions and answers at the very end. But my last question to the panel is, what final positive message could our panel leave our audience here today that would help you use and hone your pitch to land your dream job? Um, obviously, listen, just keep plugging away and it'll happen. Um, and again, you all get not you all get knocked back, but it's, again, it's just don't take it personal. That's that's the fact. You know. So keep plugging and don't take it personally. Thank you, yeah, Martin. I would I would concur with Martin there. It can, it can surely be disappointing, and you might feel it after an interview, devastated uh, when you get word that it's not yours. But keep plugging, learn from each one. That sounds now as if you're going to do hundreds. Don't take it like that. But learn from each one because sometimes you, after an interview you say, oh. They, they asked me, you know, what could I do in the school for such, and then you realize, I should have said, sure, I could have done. So you learn all the time. It's always about learning, and you know what? Eventually, your passion for what you've trained for will shine for, tr through, and the job will come. Thank you, Anne. Uh, and I would say simply, it's about staying positive, because you want a positive outcome. So even though you may have been disappointed in the past, prepare well for the next interview. Uh, all, that's all you can do. You can prepare to be the best that you can be on the particular day. You can't control what the other candidates do, what qualifications or experience they might have. The company will always choose the best person for them, as I've said earlier. And some days that's just not you. But that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you as an applicant or as an individual. So to stay positive and, and keep focused on getting the job that's right for you. Thank you, and Anne's telling us to keep learning and Patrick's telling us to stay positive. Lynn. Okay, I would say to think outside the box in terms of how you approach companies, that it's not just about looking through the, the pages in the local paper every Thursday or Friday to see what opportunities are there. You've got social media, um, you, it's about networking, it's about opening other, other doors for yourself. Okay, so thinking outside the box. I Thank could you. draw a comparison between going for an interview and uh, trying to win jobs, particularly in the contractual basis. You may just 
look at me here and say, oh, he works for himself, he runs his own company, he doesn't have to do interviews. But believe it or not, we're continually doing interviews on a weekly basis. We're tendering for different jobs, different contracts, and uh, we're probably lucky if we get 10% of them. So on a continuous basis, we're trying to get into particular companies and we, we tender for particular work and we get knocked down. But the same thing, you've got to look and see, evaluate what happened. Were, we were not competitive, were there other reasons? What were the reasons for? So we have to be continually assessing what we need to improve as a company so that we can win the next contract. And we may go again, we may not win it, but we do know that if you, you continually evaluate what you've done and keep plugging away, you will get there. Because it's not because you're not capable or we're not capable, but it's how you present yourself and the pitch you present and the confidence that you display in your ability to carry out the work or do the job that we may be tendering for. It's the same principle. Right across the board, never lose confidence in yourself. Anne said everywhere, earlier on, everybody has got a particular set of skills and they're out there. If you can identify them, if you can be confident, present yourself rightly, and even if you get knocked once, twice, three times, whatever, never lose confidence. Keep plugging and you will get there. So that's a wonderful positive message to stay confident and to keep plugging. And I even <clears throat> learned a lot there, even from Jim. He obviously is pitching all the time, pitching for contracts. And Catherine's concept of the perfect pitch goes right across the board.